appeal in Bloemfontein heard argument in an appeal application by the Democratic Alliance against the National Prosecuting Authority. The DA wants a review of the decision taken by then acting National Director of Public Prosecutions, Mokote Dimche to withdraw fraud and corruption charges against President Jacob Gedeithlegisa Zuma. Joining us to talk about this now is Pierre de Foss. He's in our studios in Cape Town. Pierre, good morning to you. Welcome to Morning Live. Uh, good morning. Now, the NPA and President Zuma's lawyers claim that the DA didn't have or doesn't have legal standing to approach the Supreme Court. What does the law say on this matter? Well, the law says that if you are in a normal case, then you have to show that you have a direct interest in the case before you can go to the court and be heard by the court, except in the case uh, where the issue is about the enforcement of your rights in the Bill of Rights, then it's much easier to get standing before the court. So one of the issues is whether this is a Bill of Rights case or whether it's just a case of reviewing the decision of the NPA on the basis that uh, the, the NPA didn't follow the law as such. Yeah, and what does the court look for in determining whether there is legal standing? I mean, what are some of the elements the parties have to demonstrate? Well, they have to show, as I said, that they have a, a direct interest in the case. Um, and they, I mean, depending on the context, that might differ. In this particular case, one of the big issues is that uh, the, the argument might be that this is a rule of law issue. Um, and the question is, does the DA actually have a direct interest in a case that has nothing to do with them because the charges uh, that was brought against uh, uh, Mr. Zuma, President Zuma, had nothing to do with them and didn't affect them directly. So the, the essence of the story is, that does it affect you directly? Of course, as I said, if, it, if they can show that this is not only about the rule of law, but also about one of the rights in the Bill of Rights, the right to administrative action, then they home and drive because then uh, it is very easy for, for them to persuade a court to get standing because yeah. the Constitution makes, uh, provides for very broad standing rules. Now, just talk a little bit about who makes the decision to prosecute a matter. Uh, one of the assertions that's been made is that uh, the decision not to prosecute should not have been made by uh, the, the national then acting national director of public prosecutions, but it should have been uh, taken by a court of law. Who should make that decision? And just legally, how should one interpret this? Yes, well, the NPA does have the power to decide to prosecute or not to prosecute. Okay. Uh, and the NPA, in terms of the NPA, the pr prosecution policy, which is adopted by the, the NPA um, uh, and approved by the minister, that policy gives guidelines when can the NPA prosecute and when should it drop charges. Uh, what I think what the DA is saying is that in this particular case, the decision to drop the charges didn't really conform to the prosecuting policy. Um, if there was going to be unfairness in the trial, that is not a question that the NPA usually decides. When they decide to prosecute or not to prosecute, they usually do it on the basis of whether there is a, a strong case to answer uh, or they uh, 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 do it on the basis of that it is not in the public interest to do so. They don't normally uh, decide a case like that on the basis of whether the, um, the, the whole process was tainted or not. That is usually what a court does. So in this process, what is the likely outcome? That if the uh, decision is reviewed and uh, perhaps the DA's view is upheld, then a prosecution would have to be undertaken. Is that what the logical outcome is here? Uh, no, because uh, we are still at a very early stage. This is a preliminary discussion that is, uh, or hearing that has taken place. Uh, if the uh, DA wins their case in the Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, and if it's not appealed further, then the case will be referred back to the High Court, where actual argument on the merits of whether the decision should have, uh, should have been, uh, the charges should have been dropped or not, will be made. It's only after that decision, if in that case, uh, the court then finds that the charges should not have been dropped. It's only then that the original charge will sort of revive from the dead, so to speak, uh, and it will remain uh, in place until, of course, such time as the NPA might, might take a new decision to drop the charges perhaps on a different ground. So it is, it is not at all certain that if the DA wins their case that their prosecution will actually happen. Yeah. The credibility of the NPA, how is it being affected by this particular case as things stand now? Well, I think in terms of the, uh, the dropping of the charges, it's difficult to know 
how it has influenced uh, the, the NPA's credibility because we, of course, don't know exactly on what basis the charges were dropped. The DA is also trying to get information about uh, uh, what criteria were used and what evidence was used to drop the charges. At the time, there was a bit of a problem for the NPA, of course, because uh, they, when they justified the dropping of the charges, it turned out that they plagiarized from an uh, overturned decision of the Hong Kong court, uh, and that tainted their the, the credibility slightly. Okay. But it will really depend on the outcome of this case, the final outcome on the substance of the case. That will really tell us whether the NPA's decision was a good one okay. or not. All right. Pierre de Foss, thank you very much. Pierre is a legal analyst joining us from our studios in Cape Town. You